I love long exposure photography, you know that. And to create most of those dreamy and surreal images that I like to take, I used ND filters. But today, we're going to see how to take long exposure photos without any filters. We will also check out a very interesting tool that might speed up our Lightroom editing workflow, which is this one right here. So a lot to talk about. Stay here, relax. Intro. Welcome to my channel. Here we talk about photography and I make videos just like this one where I share some long exposure tips. So if you're here for the very first time, it might be a good idea to subscribe. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video about the gear that you need to start with long exposure photography. Five things. Then I received a bunch of questions from people that uh, did want to start long exposure photography, but didn't want to invest any money in new gear right away. If you are one of them, clearly this video is for you. Yes, as I mentioned before, it is possible to take long exposure photos without using any filter. And in this video, we are going to see how. The very first thing that I want to talk about are the pros and the cons of not using ND filters. Yes, you got it right. There are also some advantages in not using ND filters. And the biggest one is that without any filter, your images will be possibly much cleaner because the more pieces of glass you will put in front of your lens, the higher will be the risk to create noise in your images, especially at the beginning, if you buy some cheaper ND filters, which is what I did when I started. I bought on Amazon a very cheap um, screw-on variable ND filter. My images were suffering quite a bit. And another advantage is that you will have a lot less to carry with you. In this pouch, I have all my filters, the filter holder, the lens adapters, the remote shutter release. It's a lot to carry. And I also need to carry a cleaning kit, cleaning pants. Oops. And the last advantage is that you will be able to keep quite some money in your pocket. As a matter of fact, this pouch, precisely the contents of this pouch are well over $1,000. And uh, if it is true that there are less expensive kits, which I will link down below in the description and that you will not need to buy everything right away. If you want to have quality filters, those are not inexpensive. But of course, there are some limitations in not using ND filters. And the very first problem is timing. In order to be able to take long exposure photography without any filters, you will need to have a very limited amount of ambient light available. And this usually happens during the blue hour, 30 to 40 minutes before sunrise, 30 to 40 minutes after sunset, a pretty limited window of time. The second problem is that is related to control, meaning that if you want to increase or decrease the length of your exposure, you will be limited to work with ISO and with aperture. And we will see how in just a second. In order to understand how we can control the exposure length in long exposure photography without using any filter, we will use some of my shots. I know you might be tired to hear that last year I was in New Zealand, but also these shots come from that trip. So be patient. So I am in Auckland. There's a beautiful skyline and uh, my idea is to take uh, a long exposure cityscape. I imagine a frontal view. So I drive across the bay and I reach this uh, beautiful point of view, which is Stanley Point. I don't have a lot of time, the sun is about to set and I cannot find a way 
down to the water. I also send up my drone to explore the scene. I still take some photos, but I'm not too happy with the composition. I really wanted to be closer to the water. The sun is going down fast, so I don't have a lot of time to find a new composition. The only thing I can think of is to use the Auckland Harbour Bridge in my composition. So I rush back. I find a way down to the water. By the time I set my tripod, the sun is gone. We are in full blue hour. So I don't need to use any ND filters. So let's move to Lightroom, check out my shots and see how we can control the exposure length using ISO and aperture. So the very first image here is, uh, as you can see, it seems really bright, but it's not. As a matter of fact, I'm using uh, F1.8, which I would not recommend for landscape photography or for cityscape photography. As a matter of fact, you can see that with this uh, <laughs> aperture, my depth of field is very shallow. The skyline is completely out of focus. The reason why I did this is because I wanted to see through the camera what uh, the scene looked like, because you will see that is a lot darker than this. So with ISO 64, F1.8, my base shutter speed is one tenth of a second. Now I switch my aperture to f8. I increase the ISO to 100. So the length of my exposure is extended to one second. And with one second, we can already see a little bit of a movement in the water. So the, the water is becoming a little silkier. Uh, the skyline is a little sharper and you will notice that with F8 I have beautiful stars on those lights on the bridge. In the next exposure you can see that uh, with uh, ISO 100, F8 and 30 seconds, first of all the scene got a lot darker because of course after sunset it gets darker very fast. But you can see that with 30 seconds my water becomes silkier and silkier, smoother and smoother. You can see that this shot is super dark. My histogram is all positioned to the left. We can do better than this. So I take another shot and here I increase my ISO to 200. And uh, of course it's brighter. The histogram uh, moved to the right a little more. So this image for sure is a, a cleaner image and this will be the image that we will edit right after. So to sum up what you just saw, if you want to increase the length of your exposure, you can decrease the ISO or close the aperture. Basically moving from uh, F8 to F11 or F16 so making less light go through your lens. Vice versa, if you want to decrease the length of your exposure, you will need more light in. You can increase the ISO to a limit because you don't want too much noise in your photo. So maybe to an ISO 100, you will move to 200 or 400. And you can open your aperture a little more, moving to a wider f-stop. Just be careful and avoid uh, to go too wide because as you saw, if you use a very wide aperture, your depth of field will be compromised. Now, let's talk about something new. Let's talk about this Lightroom console. It was sent me by Loop Deck uh, so that I could check how this work. And I'm very curious to try it out to see if this console will be faster then using my keyboard and my mouse and um, in the end if I can be more effective and speed up my workflow. The main advantage of a console like this is that instead of uh, hovering with your mouse to all the different panels and move the slider pointing with your mouse left or right, here you will have a dedicated knob 
to every single adjustment. It is pretty cool. I need to try it out. So I want to edit this photo with this uh, Loop Deck Plus console. Let's see how I like it. Lay your head down on my shoulder And let my heart be keep your time And in the future you'll be old enough To draw more apparent lines Well tell me what you want Tell me what you need Can I satisfy the hunger in your chest? So this was the very first image that I edit completely with the Loop Deck Plus and of course, uh, there is a learning curve at the beginning, but I have to say that it's very cool to control every single slider with the knob. I think that I have in the end uh, more control. Uh, so it's definitely a lot easier to make micro adjustments uh, with the knobs. At the same time, uh, possibly because I didn't use this console for a long time, it's still faster for me sometimes to go and search the shortcut key on the keyboard so I can see that with time I will be able to speed up my editing process quite a bit. So thanks to Loop Deck for sending me this product. I always appreciate uh, the possibility to try new gear, new tools, especially when they aim to increase my productivity. And with this we are done for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you did like this video. Maybe share it with your friends. And if you didn't subscribe yet, maybe this is the right time to do so. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. On, on, this is just the same song. I am such a head case. You are just a broken starlet. In my nuclear vision, I see more repetition, an explosion than a brand new project.